Okay, what do we do for recovery? Um, and again, you know, this is this is recovering. We have been interrupted. We are not yet restoring to our original or, or complete uh, operation or back where we started out. Uh, this is this is recovery, um, getting the business up and running. So have procedures for assessment and uh, determining what you know kind of destruction has occurred, um, what we have lost, uh, what we need to replace. Uh, this comes in a variety of forms, and of course, uh, we tend to be fixated on the technical recovery, recovery of systems. Um, but there's, you know, there are a number of other things that that may be a higher priority uh, than our recovery of the IT. So, um, you know, don't. Uh, neglect those um, but in terms of the technical recovery of course we've got our uh, standard options of hot warm and cold sites uh, basically a hot site you've got uh, systems they have the operating systems installed um, you have uh, application uh, systems ready to go um, you, uh, you know, there's desks, there's power, there's utilities that, you know, there's communications that's, you know, it's, you, you walk in and, and start working basically. Um, a warm site, um, we've got machines, we've got the operating system installed. Um, we, uh, may have to rely on, uh, other uh, factors, but we've you know we've got power. We've probably got uh, furniture, although it may be in storage. We're you know we're ready to to open up and and within a few hours uh, get operating. Uh, but it's it's going to take a little time. Uh, cold site, you got a room. You know, I, and and of course there's going to be variations uh, when you come to an agreement with an organization um, that supplies these facilities, make sure that you know, uh, you know, how they determine uh, the differences, what they are going to be willing to provide with this level of service that you are paying for. And also remember that they have other customers, other clients. If you are facing a regional disaster, you've got to be there at the door first with a suitcase full of cash um you know you, you know it's it's going to be first come first served and uh you've got to be ready to pay for it um there's there's rolling hot sites um mobile units where they will you know they have everything on a truck and and bring it to you um now of course all of these uh, different types of, of systems and, and possibilities for operation. Um, everybody kind of ignores it these days because, you know, they're all talking cloud. And, and of course, you know, if, if you are um, doing most of your work in the cloud with services from cloud providers, um, then yes, um, it doesn't matter where you are, where you're calling in from, you know, as long as you've got the uh, ability to uh, have remote systems connecting, um, you know, you don't have to recover your systems. Your systems are being run by somebody else. Again, uh, remembering with regard to cloud, you know, what types of services do uh, are you paying for? Um, how uh, how likely is it that these systems that you are paying for, um, this the services that you are paying for, uh, can go down as well? You know, is the uh, 
service that you're running on in the same region which is covered by the regional disaster that's affecting you. Um, uh, for example, um, because of differences in privacy laws, um, Amazon Web Services, when you contract uh, for uh, storage, um, they specifically assign you a particular location where your information is stored. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have uh, services provided, it's provided through a certain location so that they don't run afoul of privacy laws. Now, that means um, if you are relying on uh, the, the cloud provider uh, to be able to deal with a disaster if you, uh, you know, if it takes down their system too, no, it's not going to roll over to another country or, or something like that, you know. Um, your, you know, if your system is down, your system is down. And you have to consider that in, in your planning. So, uh, understand what you're, you're doing. Now, um, you know, it, again, in terms of the cloud, it may not be somebody else. You may have distributed operations. Um, and that's, that's good. Uh, you know, it, it can be expensive. But it's, it's good for uh, recovery and, and um, uh, your, your ability to withstand any, any kind of events. Um, the, uh, so, you know, that's another way to do it. Um, yet another is mutual aid agreements. Um, again, you know, you're in a certain type of business. Some other company... Uh, is in the same type of business and you form a mutual aid agreement um, so that if your systems go down you hop on theirs if their systems go down they hop on yours and you know always remembering that if you're in the same type of business uh, yes their their systems are going to be suitable for your operations but um, they are also your competitors so uh, it may be that when you uh, call on them and say, you know, we, we need to use your systems, they might be, oh, well, you know, it's not a really great time, maybe next week. So, you know, make sure if you have a mutual aid agreement uh, that there is, in fact, agreement and that you can, in fact, rely on them and, and their support.